Okay, so now we have uh, Timo de Guerra at Brockmeyer who's talking about the emissions API. Um, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for uh, letting me speak here at FOSTEM and present our project Emissions API. Um, to add a little suspense uh, to the um, presentation, I changed the title a little bit, uh, Emissions API or How to Get Engaged in Public Interest Tech, um, because I wanted to take into account a little bit of our origin story, um, how we got to uh, make this project, because I uh, found it interesting to share it with people. Um, afterwards, we also get a little bit into the details of the data and the technical aspects. Um, but first, I uh, want to uh, show you what Public Interest Tech is about. Um, because we first got in touch with uh, Public Interest Tech uh, when we heard about a call from the Prototype Fund in Germany. That is uh, a federally funded um, program that uh, lets developer de um, fund a, a small prototype of, uh, of a project they, they, they want to develop um, and uh, they propose this framework of public interest tech. It is basically a very broad and simple to understand concept that uh, you develop technology that serves the public good. Uh, so it adds a little bit to this floss idea that software is not only open source and libre but it also has some kind of social meaning for, for the society. And uh, we as developers as a small group of colleagues, we found that uh, very uh, interesting and, and we were immediately hooked by this idea because uh, we always found that, well, it, it's nice that we know technical stuff because of our day jobs, but somehow we would like to also put it in use to solve problems that maybe have a, have a meaning deeper than or uh, that, that it goes further along than, uh, than just the technical uh, aspects, but uh, more uh, solves problems of society as well. Uh, and so we, we really like this idea and we said, well, we just want to apply to this, to this, call, to this call, to this funding call, and we, we're going to pitch an idea. And um, the first ideas we had uh, was, well, have you heard about the satellite Sentinel-5P uh, that has uh, emissions data? And, and we had heard of it and we thought, well, that's really cool. There's open data about emissions. We want to build some cool tools with it where you can maybe um, analyze policy, uh, in, um, pol policy effects uh, on uh, emissions and uh, maybe build some cool visualizations. And um, so this, this, the Sentinel-5 satellite, they provide a lot of data products for emissions. Uh, it's a program from the ESA, from the Copernicus uh, program. Um, and uh, it's, it's basically um, spectrophotometric measurements uh, where, they, where they can um, analyze uh, the, the wavelength and then, uh, then they, they, they can uh, calculate the uh, concentrations of trace gases and um, uh, emissions, em, em, emission data. So uh, we were then uh, had some ideas what you could, maybe could do with this, so we uh, were uh, thinking about maybe uh, tracking ships uh, at sea because there are no sensors uh, and, and ships do use a lot of um, heavy fuel oils and there is supposedly um, a reduction in international ban on, on heavy fuel oils to reduce uh, sulfur dioxide emissions and uh, we thought well, maybe we can track that. Um, or think of maybe uh, diesel uh, bans in city centers uh, and, and we could just verify how uh, policies would influence actual emissions. Um, only that we very quickly realized that it's not that easy. Uh, you can just take this data and uh, analyze it uh, easily and, and put it maybe in some visualization. So we uh, thought, well, this is open, but it's not really easy to access. So uh, the good thing is that it's there. So this is really awesome. We, 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 can, we can access this data. And we also don't have to do all this fancy analysis of the spectra analysis. So uh, the ESA already gives that to us. It, it's pre-processed uh, pre data. And um, the problem that we realized is that it's packed in binary data sets that are not really uh, too easy to uh, employ in a program or in a, um, 
uh, an interactive visualization, for example. So th these are uh, NC files. It's, it's a, a scientific data format. Uh, and uh, you, when you filter this data, you get uh, chunks of uh, files that uh, represent one flyover of, of the whole satellite. So if you are interested in a region, you also have to do a lot of uh, processing from, from the data that you already pre-filtered. It's pretty large files and also uh, generally there's a lot of data processing involved beforehand. So we took a step back. And that was actually when, we, when Emissions API was born, so uh, when we came up with this idea, uh, we need public infrastructure for open data. We need um, an easy access to this satellite-based emission data. And uh, we wanted to build an infrastructure service that provides this data, that takes it from the ESA, does some pre-processing, and gives it to uh, a user who wants to, um, to use this data in a more easily to, to uh, employ format. Uh, also, we see ourselves a little bit ourselves a little bit as a data literacy project uh, because satellite data is not. That, I'll come to that later. But there, there are a lot of um, um, peculiarities that maybe you would not expect when you just think of a satellite. You think, well, there's a lot of data around. It's pretty dense, and uh, you, you can maybe make some nice visualizations. But uh, there are also some constraints that are, that are important to know. Um, yeah, so I would uh, like to take a dive into this, uh, into the more technical aspects on the data. Um, how does this work? The satellite actually flies over the Earth and, and produces scan lines. So um, you, can, you can think of it maybe as a flatbed scanner for the Earth. Uh, and uh, you actually get, uh, so, so you get a continuous picture of uh, the Earth around the orbit of the satellite. And this, when you get one of these data sets, one of these files, and you, and you just plot the data, it's something like this. So uh, here you can already see um, some, some uh, general aspects of this data. First of all, we filtered for Germany here, but you get a lot of Africa, of the uh, Antarctic as well. And you get nothing, for example, of the North Pole. Um, this is simply due to the fact that the satellites are based, uh, so the measurements are based on light, and uh, there's no active light source on the satellite, so it needs to have sunlight uh, to get data. So you, you will never get data at night, for example. Um, also, you can maybe see that there are some holes or that it's not uh, as smooth as, as you would expect the, the line in general. Um, everywhere where there's clouds, you don't have data. Uh, and this is just uh, some, some of the things. So now that when you think of um, how the satellite flies over the Earth, you don't have a measurement for each time of day uh, in every place, but you actually get uh, this line that moves over Germany in this case here, for example, um, and you see where you have the measurements. Um, so for Germany, it's a time window of um, maybe, let's say, 10 minutes. Uh, where the satellite is passing Germany and you just get data for that time, uh, that location. Uh, so when you want to, for example, measure um, emissions during rush hour and the satellite is not there during that time, you simply don't have data about that. So, so you, ca you cannot have uh, um, comparisons over one day, for example. Um, these are some of the important things to consider about the data. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to switch to the uh, technical side uh, and our architecture. Uh, what we did, uh, we downloaded the data from ESA. We pre-process it in a way uh, that we can use it more easily. We cache it in a way or we, we uh, save it in a Postgres uh, database. And we will provide a service uh, as a REST interface uh, where you can query uh, by region, by, uh, by time, and uh, you get a JSON in return uh, that you can usually pretty, easy, pretty easily uh, put into one of your uh, usual JavaScript frameworks, for example, for vis visualization. Um, I have to say that we are doing this since, uh, since September, and uh, we are now in a state where it kind of works. Uh, you, can, you can check out our homepage and our UI. Um, we have a working prototype. Um, at the moment, we only have the carbon monoxide data in our database because it is what we started with, because what easy, it was easy to get going with it. 
uh, and uh, we, we still need to add some more of the other products. Uh, we have a lot of examples already on, on our homepage where you can see how to use the data, how maybe to make visualizations with this data that we have. And of course, we also needed to develop some tools around this service. Uh, and one of them, the Sentinel 5 DL, is a download library that is on PyPI, uh, where you can uh, filter and download Sentinel 5 data automatically. It already works quite well. So if you just want to tinker around yourself, uh, you can also use uh, some of our libraries. Um, for some examples, uh, how uh, the, the query would work, so here you have a, a curl uh, command with, uh, with the query of, of our API. You can filter by country, or uh, you can also put your own polygon uh, into it, uh, and by days, and you get a, get a JSON format uh, with uh, the values. You can then plot this. This is, for example, uh, just February um, uh, in Germany. Uh, February 2019, uh, and the average for each day. So uh, you can, uh, like, like this, you, you can easily make comparisons, for example, between uh, measurement days. Um, then you can plug it into uh, your favorite uh, visualization. Here uh, we did an example with DECGL uh, that just kind of looks cool because uh, you have the 3D effect and you see um, the different areas in Germany um, uh, and their emissions at that point when the flyover was taking place. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we still have a lot of challenges to resolve. Uh, we realize during the process, obviously, that this is way too much data. Uh, we somehow need to reduce it. We are currently playing around with uh, geospatial indexing systems, but maybe somebody else has, has a better idea how to do it. Um, we also need a, lo a long-term host. Currently, we got some credit from um, Amazon, from AWS. Uh, and uh, we also have some universities that are interested in hosting our project. But uh, we still need a, a solution that has enough power for, for long uh, for long term as well. Um, and of course, we need to import more emission data, more of the other products from, uh, from the satellite. Um, yeah, so this is our story of getting involved in public interest tech. Um, for us, from that point of view, uh, the real interesting takeaway was that there is a lot of interesting data out there, but usually it's just very difficult to access. And we probably need a lot more people to get working on this infrastructure to um, build actually infrastructure that comes before building a, building a tool or a visualization. Um, and uh, so the easiest way, uh, if you want to get started in this, is uh, that you just uh, get started with our project and help us developing or use our product. Uh, first off, you would go to emissionsapi.org, check the examples, check what we are doing. Um, uh, you can see, uh, find us on GitHub, obviously, and hit us up on Twitter to uh, let us know what we are missing and what uh, you would like to have in this product. Um, I want to thank also our sponsors, Prototype Fund, uh, that is part of the Open Knowledge Foundation in Germany, and all of this is uh, sponsored in the end by the uh, German uh, uh, Ministry of Education and Research. Thank you very much.